Okay. Hey everyone, this is Kicking Ideas. I'm once again here with my good friend Cassiano and he is going to speak all in Brazilian Portuguese. I'm going to speak all in American English. Well, maybe international English. I do have a few uh, British isms in my language. Uh, so, but yeah, I live here in Japan. Cassiano lives here in Japan. We're talking about um, some cultural differences today. That's our topic. Cassiano, how you been? Me, just a bit. Estou cansado, mas vamos que vamos. Hey, at least you know the way I see it is like if 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 you're working too much, at least right now you're working. <laughs> so, yeah. um, one of the things that we're talking about today is uh, cultural. Uh, differences or cultural stereotypes and I just wanted yeah. to hit you up with uh, something what is one of the cultural stereotypes that you find um, you know that you, you you would believe about Americans what just one cultural stereotype that you could think of that most Brazilians would believe about Americans acho que talvez talvez o principal seria o patriotismo quando a gente pensa em americano né? uh, yeah that's a real thing too, because if you say like uh, uh, Americans are generally patriots, I mean, there's, I, I could also say, hey, same with the Brazilians, <laughs> um, you know, because uh, they're both countries, I guess, are unapologetically patriotic, uh, especially when mm -hmm. it comes to sporting events and those kind of things. Uh, I think that Brazilians tend to support uh, a Brazilian uh, athlete or a Brazilian uh person in any kind of sports whenever they see them and they kind of identify with them instantly americans not quite as much with the sports i think there's a lot of nowadays like we would call like some self-hate <laughs> with americans there's a lot of self-hate mm -hmm. in the country where they're like oh, oh america does all these bad things uh therefore um we don't support them and and as much and so having the the old usa usa it it's not quite as uh big as it used to be um but yeah cool. there's there's definitely a lot of um what we would call uh you know uh, patriotism within america i think that's a good one um the other point that i would say from from our side uh looking at brazil yeah. and one of the stereotypes cool. i had from brazilian people is that brazilian people love soccer <laughs> talvez, talvez não porque eu não sou tão fã, mas right, see sim, that's the sim. thing, and nobody nobody believes that. Sim. Mas tipo, eu acredito que sim, mais da metade da população sim. Right, futebol. right, and especially when the Brazilian uh, national team is playing, I think that you get sim. a lot more people that are like really excited about soccer. And they're Mas, na verdade, their... hoje, hoje não, Roberto. Eu acho que hoje, talvez os times mais regionais de estado são, são, estão mais assim, em cima, em alta, do I see. que o time nacional, né? Uhum. Wow, that, that's impressive. I mean, that's, a, that's um, really impressionante. That's really kind of shocking for me that you would say that because... What, and, and I and I, I agree with you probably the, the regional teams definitely have more support, but it's just like I remember in the World Cup, in the last times we every time we see the World wow. Cup, you know, there's mm. generally like a lot of people who don't even follow soccer, who are you know wearing the jerseys, wearing the yellow jerseys, and out and out there in in big support. So, um, mm. but I I do think it's funny because I I was asking somebody about um, soccer, they're like, yeah, I I hate soccer, and I'm like, oh. What you're Brazilian? And they're like, nah, I just hate it. And I was like, do you, do you ever play it? No, I don't want to play it. And I was like, do you want to watch it? No, I don't. I definitely don't want to watch it. I was like, wow. Um, so here's some cultural, like those are some cultural stereotypes. Can you think of a, a, a maybe a third uh, cultural stereotype for Americans? Americanos, provavelmente se você pensar em americano também, acho que você também vai lembrar de armas, né? Você vai lembrar yeah, que a parte toda americana deve ter uma arma em casa. That's right. <laughs> All Americans like guns. That's that, that I mean, like, and it's a, and right now it's probably about half the population. The people in cities definitely don't like them. Um, but the people in the countryside, 
generally speaking, they like to have guns. I, I and I'm from the countryside, and actually, I'm, I get a lot of crap from this because I'm a I'm a libertarian, yeah. but I just hate guns. Like I just I don't want to touch them. I don't want to look at them. For me personally, I don't, I don't like them. Right, 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 right. But I, I again, I, I, for me, the the right to own and bear arms is very important. But for me personally, to to touch and hold them, I just, uh, I just don't feel comfortable. So yeah. Um, the other one that is, um, uh, that, that I thought for Brazil, right, something that we have that would be would be a a definite, um, a, a definite stereotype is that Brazilians love uh, carnival, right? Carnival uh, is is like the biggest thing for Brazilians. Talvez, talvez o, mai, o maior evento, mas também, eu acho que menos que futebol, assim, que na verdade futebol também, né? Acho que uns 15 anos atrás, talvez ainda estava bem mais em alta, né? Eu acredito que depois da, da Copa ali de, da, do Brasil, que perdeu para a Alemanha de sete gols, assim, ficou bem, bem feio. É onde teve a caída mesmo, né? I think that actually I was talking to I was actually talking to um two Brazilian guys, uh Yuri and um Tiberio. They've both been on the show and they were they're actually the, ah. the co uh Yuri's the co-founder of this kicking ideas. Sim. And we were talking about it, and actually that was like a cultural um almost a a cultural trauma for Brazil when they took that seven to one loss. Uh Sim. and it, it's 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 still a cultural trauma. And I mean, like, maybe we'll get demonetized for saying that, <laughs> but, you know, it's like, you know, it's so painful for some Brazilians, um, right, even yeah. now. Uh, and I remember when it when it happened, it was seriously, it was almost like, it's sad to make the comparison, but was that the Brazilian 9-11? Because like, I mean, seriously, like it seriously put people into depression. And although nobody <laughs> died in it, it was... Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's trauma. That's trauma. <laughs> Giving up if when, when it was wow. That is trauma. I, I actually I saw people crying in the stands. I saw people just in shock. Uh it just and the next day when I went to school, because I was working in a Brazilian school at the time. And I remember walking in uh, and like, normally I'd like to, I'd, I'd joke if Brazil lost, you know, normally I would, I would joke or something. This day, I just didn't, I just kept my head down, just went into class, just, just taught the classes. And I could see, yeah, be, people were just down, like they were just sad. And I, and I, I, I totally understand it, but yeah, um, that was, that was a tough day for, for Brazil in general. And I think that in general, people um, might have lost a little bit of the luster of, you know, uh, the game and also other games, you know, uh, and other, you know, typically Brazilian kind of things. Um, cool. Now let's talk about um, maybe some things that we would say are less known um, curiosities or um, fun facts about Brazil and about the United States. So uh -huh. I, I will tell you one thing that I thought was a really interesting fun fact that I don't think a lot of people who know about Brazil uh, understand or would be expecting when they went. And that mm -hmm. is, is specifically the birthday uh, um, uh, celebrations in Brazil. And I think that there's something about it. And um, would you say, what, what do you do typically for a birthday person in Brazil, what what do people generally do when it's somebody's birthday? Ah, eu acho que é isso é bem geral, né? De aniversário pelo menos é sempre uma uma festa bem celebrada, né? Uh -huh. Tal, talvez as duas maiores, talvez hoje no Brasil seria o Natal e o Ano Novo mesmo. Ok. As mais celebradas mesmo que você vai ver toda a família mesmo acho que seria o Natal e o Ano Novo. But is there something about the birthday um, celebration that you would say that maybe a Japanese person or an American person or somebody from Europe would see that part of the 
a celebration and just be like, wow, that is so strange. Is there anything you can see from that? Ah, e talvez só a comida, mas acho que também não é tão assim diferente. Acho que só a comida That's, mesmo. I, I think, okay, so maybe I'm wrong with this, but maybe mm. I just have a different a group of Brazilians that I've hung around. But tá. so, continue sua experiência. Right, so so here's my experience with birthdays mm. and some of the stuff I see on Facebook and some of the lives I see on on birthdays. You'll have a lady or a young girl. Uh, you know, she might be. 15, 17 years old, and you'll have she'll be getting like a cake or something, or getting some kind of like uh, you know a little little birthday present, and then along come two or three of her friends with eggs, and they like smash eggs in her hair, and then they throw um, white flour all over her her hair and in her face. And everybody's laughing and having like this crazy fun time with that. And it looks like the, Yeah, like like before or sometime during their birthday like thing. Can you explain what this is all about? What is where does this start? Where does então, this come from? Seria mais acho que tipo um prank, né? So it's a prank that they pull. É. On Mas na verdade eu acho que esse de aniversário depende muito da pessoa. Acho que você não faria com qualquer pessoa, por exemplo. Não dá qualquer pessoa dependendo da menina que você fizer, ela pode traumatizar a vida inteira, ela quer encerrar a festa ali e não quer aparecer mais, né? Então, é mais comum, por exemplo, quando é, as pessoas se formam na no ensino médio, na faculdade, esses são mais normal. Esse você vai ver mais vezes no Brasil, por exemplo. Nesse de festa, é mais raro, porque... I see. Se você fizer com, com mulher, assim, sexo feminino, acho que é bem pesado, pode ser bem pesado. I know, but it's like, I see it happen. Like, it's not the first time or like, the I've, I've seen it happen like five, six okay. times. And I've just seen Mas it. Na yeah, outside the schools. Uh, I've seen it uh. outside of schools. I've seen it at one lady. She's like a, a grown woman. And like, I guess her kids, mm -hmm. they just come up and just start smashing eggs on her head and throwing flour all over her face. And like, I was just like, what <laughs> is the, what's wrong with this? Like that. That is the meanest thing that would ever have, have ever seen done to somebody. And she's just laughing. She thinks it's the funniest thing ever. And she just she just feels so loved because somebody would decide to smash eggs in her face or on her head. And I mean, like, it's a mess. It's a straight, crazy mess. And I can't believe that's going on. And I'm like, stop. What are you guys doing? You know, like, in my mind, I'm like, that can't go like this. You did that to an American girl. That's it. She is traumatized. She is like never going to be your friend ever again. Like that's Nunca it. Nunca mais vai falar com você. Right, right, right. That's like the meanest thing I've ever seen anybody do to anybody. And they just do it. And I was like, wow, that was insane. And, and she was. Não, mas é mais caro do que você imagina, Roberto. Okay. Acho que você okay. vai ver isso mais em escola do que aniversário. I see. I see. Well, they do it in the school, but it's on the kid's birthday usually. That's what I thought was really crazy. It's like it's on. Yeah, normally, you find a person more extroverted, Robert. Right, right. Have to be a complete no, no, extrovert. No. They have sim. to always be sim. there, and they probably did it to somebody else, like the day, like the on sim. their birthday. Provavelmente and so it's like alguém, it's kind of an inside joke where they always get each other. Sim. Wow, Sim. but it's still amazing that, 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 like, I just saw that, I saw the girl, she was, that about those, isn't it? she was just laughing her brains out, and I was just like, <laughs> if I had seen that in America, like, people were going to get shot, you know what I mean, like, that's like, because everybody's got guns, right, so, you know, that's what, that's, that, that's, that's what I was thinking, like, wow, that is, you know, pretty crazy with the way that um, people do that, in my experience, yeah, um, I I have only ever, you know, we we do a bir oh, and the birthday song, the birthday song, is a bit. The naughty one, oh normal. That well, there's a there's a, there's there's a lot to it, right? So there's like it's like, para bens para você nesta data querida muitas felicidades muitos anos de vida. And then it, it speeds up. And then they go, then they start clapping. Like they're chanting something. And then 
like then I was watching this birthday party. It's like these 15 year old kids. And and I heard this go out. It's like, con quien será, con quien será, con quien será que tal persona va a casar, right? Like this person's going to marry. And like, uh, it will depend. It will depend. It will depend if so and so accepts. I was like, what in the Sim. world? Like, this is crazy. Mas essa, essa parte do final não é original, Roberto. Na okay, verdade, what's the original? What's the original? Foi. O original é só até a parte que você cantou. Só até a parte que você cantou é o normal. Uh -huh. Ok. Aí algumas pessoas em, colocaram, e como você falou mesmo, parece uma oração no final, que não tem uma parte que eles falam ha tim -bu. Ok, yeah, yeah, ha tim -bu. Ha -tim -bu. Então, na verdade, na verdade, não é original da música. Foi colocado com o tempo, assim como essa daí que você cantou da parte do. Wow, it's just crazy that there's so much to it. Sim. There, there is a lot to então, it. Então, tipo assim, depende da pessoa que está lá junto. Vai, você vai entrar, você vai ver eles vão cantar de cada uma. Se for bem introvertido, vai só cantar até o parabéns. Acabou ali. Né? Já vai apagar a vela ali. Então, se tiver a pessoa mais brincalhona, vai falar besteira. Tem muito que coloca bastante besteira no final they da do, música. They do. It's so crazy. Então. <laughs> like I said, like, it, 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 like um, she accepted, and then they had four kids, and then they separated. And I was like, <laughs> what in the world is going on with these, <laughs> this song, you know? <laughs> So we, we have something similar like that in in American music, or like American uh, Happy Birthday. So it'll, it'll, uh, at the end, it's like, like Happy Birthday to you. You were born in a zoo. You look like a monkey yeah. and you act like one too, or you smell like one too, or, or something <laughs> yeah, like that. You know. Um, so so people will say that, and that's like the the as bad as it gets. But they're not saying like. Who will it be? Who will it be? Who will it be that you decide to marry? You know, it's like, what? <laughs> you know, and they're laughing and everybody's having a great time. Yeah. And I just thought that was amazing. Yeah. It's an amazing part of the culture that I find that you're so playful. And I don't think that people realize that that playfulness is, is, is that, uh, that big in, in Brazil. Yeah. I think that we, we think of it, I think our pre, uh, preconceived idea uh, of Brazil Ooh. is that there's a lot more, um, like you're a lot more cool, you know, like you're a lot more um, kind of like other Open Latinos. Like, like if I look at like other Latinos are like way more into being cool. Like that, it's, it's so important that they, that they have that facade of like, you know, being cool and like that. Like if I'm thinking about Mexicans, if I'm thinking about um, Peruvians, there, there's way more like reservedness in, that, in those cultures. And in Brazil, it's like gone. Like they just, wow, they're like having a great time and like making funny, like the funniest jokes I've ever heard are from Brazilian people. Like they just like, they have the, and they're brutal, brutal jokes. Like just, just like, like I couldn't imagine how anybody could take those kind of jokes, but they just they just dish it. Uh, they don't have any problem with it. It's fun. Well, pays those memes, they just follow me. Oh yeah, man. The, the memes from Brazil, they're brutal. <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah, there's that too. I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> for me for sure as well. I was I, I was quite shocked with any of that. Yeah. Yeah. Mas o que que faz então nos Estados Unidos? O que, que você diria que tem alguma coisa assim que um fun fact, né? Seria diferente que normalmente o pessoal não conhece. Well, so for, like from in from my point of view, I, I grew up in like a Sim. cowboy town, right? Uh -huh. And I grew up around where, where like there was cowboy way of life. You know what I mean? Like people said, Sim. you know, ma'am. You know, people said like, yes sir, no sir, How yes ma'am, no ma'am. They're very polite in that way, like the cowboy uh, people. And then there was like just normal kind of like, um, I guess, towny people. And they're, they're, they're not particularly that way. But I just remember like, I think that it, people would be shocked to see that there are still like real cowboy style people in, 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 in the United States that really are very much like the old 
um, Western cowboy people. Um, and they, they still have that, that same um, way of doing things. And I, for me, I, I love that part of my culture. So um, I guess the other thing I would say from Americans that, you know, we love to do a birthday party. I guess that is a really important thing. We like to do surprise parties, but we don't see them that often. Um, but it is something that we really like to do is have like a surprise birthday party for somebody. I think that's one that Americans mm -hmm. generally do like to do. It doesn't get pulled off very often. Usually the person does find out, but it is always something that they try to do. Yeah. Legal. Yeah. E como que é a, a diversidade de etnia? Porque, por exemplo, o Brasil, mm -hmm. ele é, é muito diversificado, assim, muito, muito mesmo. Fora coloração de pele e tal. Tem as regiões, então cada região também tem o seu jeito de falar, os seus costumes e as suas manias, né? Era oh, isso. for sure. I mean, like, that's another thing, like, uh, with, America, with America that I think a lot of people would, you, you get a very, um, you get a very clear look at Los Angeles and you get a very clear yeah. look at New York a bit of Chicago mm -hmm. and a bit of Miami. And that's what people generally look at when they see the United States. But I think that there's so much more of it is more just like, um, you know, small town America. And we see that in, in a lot of the movies and things like when they deal with Texas and they deal with those things, it's usually uh, small town America. And yeah, for me, that that's a lot of what I lived. I mean, I remember the, the movie Stand By Me. Uh, it's a movie uh, based on a Stephen King book. Um, and that, that movie was very similar to how I grew up, even though it was like um, 20 years before uh, I uh, was born. So I think it was around, sorry, not 20 years, but at least 10, 13 years before I was born uh, was mm -hmm. when that movie was supposed to have occurred. Uh, you know, it's it's much much older than 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 me, and I think that it, yeah, it, it's uh, that kind of uh, freedom that kids used to have. I I did have that. I don't know that they have it anymore. It seems like less and less that they have it. Um, my whole life was was outdoors. That's another thing that's like uh, that was different. I think probably even to now, but you know where where I lived, we we would go out, we would hunt, we would. Uh, fish we would um you know make trouble <laughs> um but that was a lot of things that we would do yeah e como que é tratada essa questão assim de das diferenças por exemplo eu sei que lá no sul é, o pessoal de fora não não é tão bem visto né a palavra assim de ah. o que é diferente o preconceito Right. So, okay. I see what you're saying. Well, the, you know, and it's interesting that I think America does a lot of uh, what we call, it did from the, in the past. And I don't know if, how much now it is because I haven't lived there for about 20 yeah. years. But when I did live uh -huh. there, I noticed that there was a lot of self-segregation where um, groups would just kind of like group into people from their own culture or from their own race or from their own ethnicity or whatever but it would they would generally group together and and be having parties with their own people and it's not as big of like a mixing or a melting pot as they say uh, it was a melting pot for europeans but I, in the beginning if you watch the gangs of new york have you ever watched that movie leonardo dicaprio yeah. in in that movie mm -hmm. they, they, they're they're uh Their gangs and all the gangs are divided because they're divided into Irish. They're divided into all you know, just all the different Italians and and all of the uh -huh. different places you could be from, and they're they're just divided that way because uh, people generally came in and mixed with their own culture most, uh, you know, and and didn't uh, inter mix with the other uh, cultures. And it, it you know it, it really was um, kind of a long process and I think that you know in the 1960s and uh, we still had the segregation laws um, there are still laws that were uh, set up uh, you know to do just that to segregate to make things you know uh, uh, difficult for everybody and luckily for me I, I never grew up around that you know that kind of thing although I was 
um, you know, if I, in, it, where I grew up, I wasn't necessarily treated as a normal American person because people knew my, my father was from Peru. They didn't know what that meant. Um, for example, like, to, like they, they just thought they always uh, called him uh, 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 um, different, you know, racial slurs. And I, it was really sad for me to deal with that. Uh, but they would use that they would use racial uh, pejoratives for my father, for my brother, for me. And I, and I didn't really like that. I mean, like, I didn't get it as bad as they did. Occasionally, I had one mm -hmm. friend of mine, uh, it was it, it made me really upset, but he used to call me a uh, bean burrito. And that like that used to make me upset. Because like, again, it was just it wasn't necessary. I mean, my name is Rob, right? So, you know, it's like, you know, uh, and I grew up with him. And, you know, it was it, it was really quite upsetting when he would call me that. And I, I just didn't have what was I supposed to say that really offends me that makes me sad, you know, like, uh, but it did it made me sad and it made me it made me upset. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so there's a bit of it. But there's, you know, I think that a lot of times um, for my my particular situation is, I just just kind of ignored people that were, uh, you know, like that. And I, I generally didn't have any, um, uh, you know, I would, I would just go and talk to anybody that I saw. It didn't matter where they were from or, you know, what, what color the skin was when I was in college. Um, but when I was going through high school, I mean, you just, there was only one <laughs> ethnicity basically. And that was just a bunch of white people in Utah. You know, that's, 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 that's what you had very, very much just one, one race. Although there were some Native Americans, I was good friends with the uh, some Native Americans. They were uh, they were my friends. They taught me some uh, Navajo, the, the Navajo, Navajo, uh, Navajo people. Sorry. Yeah, the Navajo people. And I, I had uh, some great friends from from that that tribe. They're really cool people. Um, uh, the guy, one of his name was Dwayne. The other name was Dan. And they were just really great guys. And I I hung out with them through most of high school yeah muito interessante né? conhecer culturas assim tão diferentes né e, e aqui Robert qual que qual que seria a sua visão de né de estereotipo a gente sendo estrangeiro morando no Japão como que você vê wow I think um, there's so much to to being a, a foreigner living in Japan I think one thing um, Japan what uh, a lot of people don't understand is it, it's not necessarily um, well, there are definitely some kind of uh, of uh, cognitive bias or a, some kind of bi bias that Japanese people have for people that are not Japanese. And I think there's definitely a hierarchy of where they kind of respect and where they don't respect in the Japanese people. You know, it's like, oh, you're from this country, you get more respect than from this country, you get less respect. Mm -hmm. And I think that there mm -hmm. is a bit of that um, in uh, Japan, I think that Japanese people generally respect educated people. Um, so like if you're, if you're well educated, then they, they tend to expect, you know, give you more ex respect. So like I, I always tell Brazilian people, if you just start with, uh, with English first with Japanese people, they'll respect you as an educated person. It doesn't matter where you're from, but if you can speak to them in English first, mm -hmm. then they'll, they'll automatically give you a, a lot more respect than they would if you spoke to them in poor Japanese, which is very strange, right? I mean, like in Brazil, if I came in speaking English, people say, no, speak Portuguese, you're in Brazil, right? That, that's, you know, <laughs> right, 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 right. And in America too, I mean, like if you, you, there's a lot of people that are that are very strong on that and they're like, oh, you know, speak in English. And it's like, it's quite rude sometimes that Americans will do that. You know, if you're speaking in another language, so you're in this country, you should speak in English. And I like that. That's a. I don't get that from Japanese at all. Japanese people are like, oh, you speak English. That's so cool. Can you teach me English? And if if you're a foreigner that speaks English, then they're like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then like I'll sometimes speak Portuguese with people, and they're like, wow, you speak Portuguese? That's so amazing, you know. And like that's really cool because they know I speak English, and they you know so so then they they. they I said, yeah, of course, most people speak lots of different languages in the world. I kind of <laughs> put them in that. So they, they respect education in Japan more than they uh, than they really se segregate by um, race or ethnicity. They, if, if you're really highly intelligent, then they, they or very good at something, they really respect your your merit. So uh, that's that's something I've noticed with Japanese people. Yeah.
Ah. É, eu não sei, isso que você falou é certo do japonês. Eu falo bem japonês, eu falo bem fluente. Mas eu vejo que quando eles olham para mim, acho que não é essa imagem né, que eles têm. Porque provavelmente eles já sabem que eu sou brasileiro já de início. Então, uhum. mesmo que eu fale o japonês sem sotaque, sem nada, é diferente. Aí, a partir do momento que eu falo, eu falo inglês, parece que muda mesmo. Parece que vira a chave. Ah, eu falo inglês, nossa! Não, porque... Essa é a parte da educação mesmo. That's right. They, they... Well, to... and I, I've said this before on the program, I've said that... Oh. Uh, if you don't speak English, you're you're not educated in this world. It's just like that's that's the mark of education. That's the, the, the baseline of education is if you, you speak the lingua franca, which is the, you know, and it's not I didn't choose it. I would have been happy if it would have been Portuguese. I would have been happy if it would have been French. I would have been happy if it would have been Spanish because I speak those languages. If, if uh -huh. it would have been another language, I would have to learn that one. Because I, I mean, but I like languages. And so if you don't like learning languages, then I can see, you know, it's kind of upsetting that English is the top language and if, if you know if you if you uh you know feel bad about that there's not a lot I can do for you but it's just the reality of you know people uh that speak English they're they're considered educated like all the doctors I've ever met um outside of Japan they've all spoken English maybe not maybe not really great but they they definitely speak it and they definitely can read it um so uh that's that's been something yeah for sure yeah eu acho que a, a cabeça aberta, né, o open-minded, acho que é o que muda né, nessa parte de estereotipo de você ver. Né? Normalmente o estereotipo vai vir de pré-julgamento, né? Colocar um adesivo, né? Um é, é, é fácil se você... É fácil just to. Well, I think human beings, we like to categorize. We like to just like, oh, ok, now I know what this is, now I can categorize it, it's this. You know, like, I, you see on mine, I got like a, a Spider-Man on here. And you're like, oh, okay, he's uh -huh. a nerd, right? They, they, they can just like, you know, they can categorize it. And once they categorize you, then, then you know, they don't have to deal with anything else. You know, it's just like, oh, okay, we, we know what he is. You know, uh, he, he's a geek. And so they, they could put, just put that on there. And I think that humans like to do that shorthand. It's it, We call it shorthand. It's where you, instead of, you know, finding out, instead of going through the process of, uh, of you know, exploration, they just, automatically say it's something and, and and now you're classified and and now I don't have to deal with you anymore. That's very normal reaction for people, I think. Yeah. Eu acho que é engraçado como como que cada país é, faz essa colocação, né, em boxes, em caixas, né? Porque, por exemplo, no Brasil, às vezes a pessoa pode ser muito inteligente, às vezes a pessoa pode ser formada em várias coisas, mas, por exemplo, vão perguntar para ela, ah, você sabe onde mora tal Luiz, tal pessoa? Ela vai falar, não, não sei. Aí se você falar, ah, não, você sabe onde mora o careca? Aí ele fala, ah, o careca eu sei, mora em tal lugar. Tipo assim, talvez, talvez os valores de, do que é colocado são diferentes, né? Oh, I think so. That, that there's definitely a lot to that. I think, you know, it's interesting for me always, when I meet Brazilians over here, uh, hmm. it's always interesting, uh, you know, that I find so much variation in education, in actual education. Like I'll find people who, um, who are, are, are book writers, they've written several books and, and they're, uh, you know, they'll come up and they'll talk to me and say, yeah, I wrote these books and I'm, I'm actually quite a famous writer in Brazil. And I'm like, wow, you, you've got like how many published? And they're like, yeah, I got these published. And I said, like, what are you doing in Japan? It's like, yeah, I just, I just, you know, decided to come and see what it was like. So I see everything, you know, and then there's like martial artists. I, one thing about Brazilians that you guys are like crazy martial artists, like, you know, like, like on top level of the world in martial arts, like some of the best jujitsu fighters. I mean, the whole Gracie family uh, is, is, is uh, jujitsu, but not only that, it's like um, Muay Thai. You've got Brazilian Muay Thai and it's really well practiced over here. And then like, I noticed that there's, like Brazilian uh, Taekwondo now, like there's a lot of them that do Taekwondo that are that are Brazilians. And then there's, uh, you know, just the whole mixed martial arts scene as well. Uh, I've got friends who Na verdade, os esportes são muito, são muito, que não são muito divulgados. Por exemplo, o vôlei. O vôlei tem mais troféus e campeonatos do que o futebol, mas não é falado, né? Tanto masculino como feminino. Eles têm mais medalhas e campeonatos mundiais do que o futebol. I did not know that. But I know that you guys are very good at volleyball too. That's true. And it's very popular. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think again, it's just like Brazil loves uh, all kinds of different sports. I think Formula One is another one that's it, that that it, it was uh, Brazil tends to enjoy and and really uh, be a part of. Um, and I noticed that you know even oh cyc- cycling Brazilians are, Brazilians are like the top cyclists in Japan right now. Like like if you don't, yeah, there's so many uh, cyclists. Like I, I have a, a a couple of clubs that I work uh, with and the, the kind of like gringo club, it's like all, um, you know, British and, and different. And they had like a, a challenge over golden week. And the challenge that the uh, Brazilians did over Sakura, it was a Sakura something or other. And man, we're talking like all the Brazilians, like they had done more in one day than these guys had done over golden week which is like you know that's a, like in one day one ride these guys were pulling oh, down okay. one of the guys he pulled a 600 kilometer ride over 600 kilometers ride in one day 100 yeah yeah one in one in one ride mm-hmm. in less than 30 in less than 30 hours i think he did it in 21 hours or so but he rode 600 kilometers there was a woman she did 500 kilometers uh, in one day, and her husband rode alongside with her. Uh, these guys were absolutely insane. They're called CCJ, CCJ, uh, it stands for uh, Corredores y Ciclistas in Japón. I'm part of their group uh, as far as like wow. I, I try to participate with them. I actually won the mountain bike one, uh, but there was not a lot of uh, uh, competition in the mountain biking because they really like the road cycling. That was stiff competition in the road cycling. So they, they wow. definitely, yeah, it was, it was it, so many kilometers were, were, were calculated and so much was done and they, they did it all over the Strava app, which is like the, is very a famous uh, for running and for cycling. Cool. And I what oh, the runners too. They had a guy, he ran, I don't know. It was like insane amount of kilometers over the week. It was like, I think he'd run like almost 200 kilometers over the week. Marathon, eu sei que tem bastante mesmo. Marathon, yeah, 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 yeah. Marathon. Muito, muito Brazil muito has bom. super strong marathon, uh, it, you know, like internationally. I always see them in like the, you know, on the podiums uh, as marathon runners. Yeah. I think the most famous Mas one was the guy who got, uh, who got grabbed at, in Athens. He had a, a Brazilian uh, marathon runner. He was running and he, think he, he was in first place and some dude just ran up and grabbed him and stopped him and slowed him down. And it, like, but he, he he fought back and he got into third posi- third place. But it's so depressing. Like I was so like hurt because he was just he was just grabbed. By some guy. Yeah, but I, I I you know there are definitely um, great marathon runners in Brazil. So. E a música, né, Roberto? Não podemos esquecer da música. Oh yeah, music. Yeah, you guys have your own. Like I, you have, have a couple of different uh, musics that are like internationally understood. Uh, uh, like Bo- Bossa Nova, Bossa Nova, yeah, Bossa Nova is like funk. I don't consider it. You don't like funk, <laughs> but I no. love funk. I love the no, sound. No. I have no idea what it's saying. Like when they told me what the words were, I was I like, oh man, no. like I, no, no, uh, no. yeah. I, if you don't know the words, funk is awesome. But if you like listen to what it says, it's like, oh gosh, you know, grow up. But you know, it's no, like. Por exemplo, é que hoje não é tão sujo, mas antigamente, né? Os hip hop foram ali. Oh, American. Yeah, hip hop used to be dirty as could be. Yeah. Então, é bem parecido. É bem parecido. Yeah, that was one difference. I think we're we're running up on our, our uh, kind of on our time limit because I got to get I've got to get uh, going on to something else right uh, uh, in a few minutes here. But um, you know, we we were able to cover a few more things. Is there anything else that you had any questions about of, of American culture that I mean, like I feel kind of uncomfortable a- answering uh, for all 330,000 or uh, 330 million Americans, whatever it is right now, um, 400 million oh, Americans almost. Uh, but uh, I, I feel uh, a little bit like I, I shouldn't answer to, to those things, but I would say that my experience in the United States. Uh, was uh, until I was 23 years old, that was my country. Mm-hmm. And I'm still a American passport holder. I just don't, I, I don't uh, intend to go back anytime soon. And I, and I uh-huh. really enjoy Japan. So, yeah. É, eu, eu gostaria de saber, assim, essa diferença, né? Porque me, os Estados Unidos é bem parecido com o Brasil. Tanto os estados e talvez cada estado também deve pensar diferente, né? 
Definitely. Então, eu, eu gostaria de tipo, saber o que que o que que você acha que seria uma boa é, ideia de perspectiva para os pré-julgamentos existirem só depois de conhecer, né? Mais intimamente, né? As pessoas, porque sempre o pré-julgamento vai vir antes, né? Yeah, you definitely have to find out more and just, you know, uh, talk to people. Every person's got their own ideas. It was interesting, though, a couple of weeks back, I met this uh, American English teacher on the train. And, you know, it's great because we just, one thing about Americans, we do love to just talk with just anybody. It's like, um, uh -huh. I was told this, like, I went to a teaching, um, like, it was like a, a, a big get together of teachers in Japan. And uh -huh. uh, the guy, my boss at the time, he, he, he went up and he, and he talked to somebody, or I think he did, or somebody else had, had just went up and started talking to somebody. And the lady, she says, oh yeah, um, I'm Canadian. Cause he asked, where are you from? And she's like, I'm Canadian and you're American. <laughs> and he's like, how did you know? He's like, only Americans would just go up and talk to somebody they don't know. And I think that's really, it's, it's very, very true that we do like to just go up and talk to somebody we don't know. And I, that's how I've met most of the Brazilians I meet. I just go, Oi, você é brasileiro? And they go, Ooh, oh. and they're like, why, why, why is this dude just coming up and talking to us? You know, they just thought it was funny. And then I'm like, oh, oh so where are you guys from? I'm like, I ask him all these questions. And, it, it, you know, that's how I learned Portuguese is just by going up and talking to everybody that I thought, you know, might be Brazilian. It happened the other day. I was I, I, this guy. He was from India, but I thought he was from Brazil. And I went up and I was like, "Oh, hey, we'll say Brazilian." He's like, "Oh, yeah, I'm from India." Yeah. <laughs> so <I'm> like, <laughs> you know, but, but then we had a nice little conversation, and, and he said, "Are you Brazilian?" I was like, "No, I'm American." He's like, I, "I knew it because only only Americans talk to everybody." You know, it's like that's one thing that's interesting about Americans. I, I actually think that's a that's one big point of pride that I have. Uh, is that we're the friendliest people I think in the world where we, we, we will just go up and talk to somebody rather than you know not and I, I maybe it's just me too I mean I, I definitely like to just go up and talk to anybody um, so yeah that's it é, eu acho que sempre acho que a educação vai sempre fazer o papel da balança né Robert porque se a gente parar para pensar né tem o Hitler ele julgou que alguma raça não precisava existir no mundo, né? Ah, Nós temos é. o Trump que também falou que os mexicanos eram só estupradores e os brasileiros eram só porcos, coisa assim. Então, basta uma palavra de uma pessoa para poder mudar o jeito que você pensa. Então, acho que se você tiver a educação certa, você vai querer conhecer primeiro para ver oh, yeah. como é essa pessoa e não For generalizar, sure. né? For sure. It, 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 any kind of generalization, you know, uh, it, it's it's really quite sad, actually. I, I met uh, I met a lot of different. The thing about Japan that's really cool is you, you meet people from all over the world at like a foreigner party. If it's like an English speaking foreigner party, it's full of people from all over the world. Even in the Brazilian community, it's quite crazy. You're gonna like you find Colombians, you find uh, uh, Peruvians, Paraguay. you find Paraguayans, you find yeah Argentinians, you find uh, all kinds of people, and they're all speaking kind of Portuguese, but not quite Portuguese. And some of them are really uh -huh. good. Some of them speak it really, uh -huh. really well. Um, and then you find Filipinos, you find Vietnamese, you find different people that, are, that have married Brazilians over here. Uh -huh. uh, you find Japanese uh -huh. that, are, that are speaking uh, Portuguese. You find uh -huh. this in, in the Brazilian community. So I think the Brazilian community is really, really is quite fun. And I, I've always been blessed in my life that I've been able to have the Brazilian community when I wanted to hang out with Brazilian people, the English speaking community when I want to take, hang out with uh, English speakers and almost to a certain extent, the Filipino community, because like, like they're really receiving. If you go up and talk to them, they will almost always talk back to you and be very uh, friendly. And so I, I've had those uh, different communities to deal with. And of course, Japanese community, if I want to, uh, you know, deal with just Japanese people, and that one's actually the hardest one to get into because they are very kind of, uh, you know, tight knit in their, in their uh, friendships, you know, um, so yeah, but they generally, I, I've met some of the coolest people I've met in, in the world have been Japanese. So I, I don't have any, um, you know, there, there are, there's a bit of everything, but, uh, yeah, generally speaking, that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the time today. Uh, and we're going to, uh, make this into a YouTube video and it'll probably go yeah. up on Facebook. Although it's interesting. I did get, uh, I did kind of get, uh, not banned. I got probation on Facebook for something I posted. Facebook. 
Yeah, I got a, I got, a, I got. A, so I don't know if I can be able, to, if I will be able to post this on Facebook. If you see it on Facebook, it's because like I, I, I got through somehow. But yeah, they, uh -huh. they've been pretty tough on me recently. So we'll see how it goes. But it'll definitely be on on the YouTube channel. So thank you again okay. for hanging out with me, Castiano. And we'll uh, yeah, have, you, uh, have the next time we get a chance to talk. Probably next week if we can get uh, the time to work together. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.